Good evening. Today I want to share with you the first steps to the fascinating world of Arduino Unos, ESP8266 and ESP32 microcontrollers. We will start with this ordinary but unused computer. And after a few minutes we shall make three robots that blink small lights on and off and that can as easily control bigger devices as well. Let me first show you how this works. This is a microcontroller and it is very easy to use with the help of this board that is a cheap three and a half dollar clone of the famous Arduino Uno. These small sockets with GND markings are all connected together and they are called as the common ground. At electric circuits the ground serves as a common return path for all different branches of electric current. I must say that I am risking to break my microcontroller now, but I want to show you something. If I connect a small coin battery between the ground and this one foot of our microcontroller, we see that yellow light turning on. And as I toggle the wire, we naturally see the light blinking. Our first robot is going to do this same work. It is going to conduct some of its electric power to this same foot and is by that way making the onboard LED to blink. But first, I must quickly catch up to your level, unpack and power up this computer for the first time. Let us use some common language. I presume that you, as a YouTube viewer, already have an internet connection there. At our home we use this wireless Wi-Fi router with password. I choose all the default settings. My name is Mika Kurkela, pleased to meet you and please feel free to join the discussions below these videos. My computer seems to have some virus protection and a firewall pre-installed, so I leave those for today. I refuse to install at this point these many programs that are advertised here, but let's use this program to get you a clearer view of what's happening on my screen. And again, some of these pre-installed icons probably won't be necessary for us. So. To use these microcontrollers you need one simple program that is a tool that translates and tells our instructions to the microcontroller. That tool is called an Integrated Development Environment IDE, and you can get it for free by searching for Download Arduino IDE and by clicking this link. As I am having a Windows 10 operating system, I click here for some good instructions. Let's place this window of instructions onto the left half of my screen. And I click here and here to get to the download page of the Arduino IDE setup program. When that file is downloaded, we run it. According to the advice that we are given in the instructions, we use everywhere the default settings. And we allow the program to make changes to our computer. I have earlier used this same program on Windows XP and on Linux Ubuntu computers, and for them the setup instructions were quite as clear as they are in here. Now they recommend us to check for some instructions that are related to the board that we are using. I place those instructions onto the right half of the screen. And as our board is Arduino Uno, we are encouraged now to connect the board to our computer with a USB cable. We hear a sound and this green light here means that the Arduino Uno is now powered on. It is getting its power from our computer and that is very practical indeed. If you are impatient or if your Arduino IDE is already set up, up to date and tested, you can click one of these buttons and skip few minutes of this video. We will proceed to the ESP8266 and ESP32 microcontrollers after a short moment. 
But now we continue with the instructions of the Arduino Uno board and double click this new icon that has appeared on computer's desktop. For those of my viewers that aren't using a full HD screen, I increase the text size a little. Now it looks better. All the instructions, that is all the programs that we write to a microcontroller, have this structure. First we set up a system and then the microcontroller starts to do for us the tedious work over and over again. This sketch doesn't do anything, but we are advised to get acquainted with a certain example program by choosing File, Examples, 01 Basic, Blink. We are recommended to check that our computer is aware of the presence of our Arduino Uno board at one of its USB ports. Well, this computer seems to have noticed our Arduino Uno at this particular USB port. We now upload our first program to a microcontroller by clicking this arrow. And after a while our yellow LED starts blinking again, but this time the board is blinking by itself. Let's highlight this one word, right click it and see what that delay actually does. And we are let to know that it makes the microcontroller to wait for whole one second. Let's change that to three seconds, upload this new program and we see that everything goes as earlier, but now the LED is off always for three seconds. Now. Let's take a closer look at this small square chip that lies between the USB cable and the microcontroller. At the original Arduino Uno boards, this is the chip that handles the USB connection with our computer. In many cheaper clones of the Arduino Uno, this chip is replaced with a CH340G chip. That is an excellent chip too, but you may need to install to your Windows computer a USB driver for this chip. After a minute I show you how to install one. But first few words about ESP8266 microcontrollers. We use as an example this NodeMCU 0.9 development kit that uses for its USB connection the very same CH340G chip that we just talked about. This Note MCU costs about two and a half dollars and it is very easy to use. Here it is actually running exactly the same code as our Arduino Uno did, but on these Note MCU boards the electronic connection happens to be in such a way opposite that the LED is illuminating at those cases when the microcontroller has connected its one certain pin to the ground and it is not illuminating when the pin is connected to the microcontroller's 3.3 volt operating voltage. Anyhow, if I connect a relay to that same pin, we can also here easily control bigger devices too. Let's now see how to upload our new programs to these ESP8266 microcontrollers. You'll get the necessary instructions by searching with your browser for ESP8266 Arduino IDE. Click this link and there you are advised to copy this one line of text onto the clipboard of your computer. At the Arduino IDE we now choose File and Preferences to find this white box of additional board manager resource locators. As I don't have any text in that box yet, I don't need to place any separating commas into there. And the only text that I paste into the box is that one line that we are already having at our clipboard. Then they advise us to choose Tools, Board, Board Manager and to search for ESP8266. We click this box that is made by the ESP8266 community and click the install button.
And now we can find some Node MCU development boards among the many other boards that can be programmed with the Arduino IDE. Use your USB cable and connect your Node MCU to your computer. If you are lucky or using some of the newer versions of the Node MCU, you will already at this point find here the USB port that your Node MCU is using, and you can skip the next one minute of this video. But as this Note MCU version 0.9 is having the CH340G chip, the Arduino IDE cannot find the right USB port yet. So I need to install a USB driver for this chip. On my computer's desktop, I click on this magnifying glass icon, I search and choose the device manager, I choose this row of ports for communication and local print terminals, right click the USB port that has the yellow exclamation mark and choose to update driver software. It is going to take a while, but after that you can find and indicate to the Arduino IDE the USB port to which our Node MCU is connected to. Let's choose again File, Examples, Basics, Blink. And as usual we upload programs by clicking the green arrow. And we see that we are able to upload programs here as well, and our LED is now turning on and off after every single new second. Now let's highlight this other strange word, right click it and choose to file in reference what that digital write does. And we are let to know that with this command we can make the microcontroller to connect its any individual digital pin to its 3.3 volt operating voltage or alternatively to connect that pin to the common ground of the microcontroller. Well, let's try to blink one other LED that happens to be on these Node MCU boards. That unofficial onboard LED is connected to the digital pin number 2 of our microcontroller. I change this new information to all these three places and upload this newly modified program. And we see how this other LED starts to blink. The power from a USB port is fully sufficient for this kind of experiments. But I encourage you to experiment also the excellent Wi-Fi features of this microcontroller, and for those experiments you should use some stronger power supply. And actually, if you use Wi-Fi connections, you don't need to use your USB cable very often, because you can use the Wi-Fi connection for uploading your new programs to these ESP8266 microcontrollers. If you are interested in those wireless uploading features of this microcontroller, you will need to install to your computer one more tool that the manufacturer has written for us in Python programming language. In some Windows computers that Python is already installed in the factory, but here with my computer that is not the case and after a minute in this video we are going to install also it to this computer as we now proceed to the ESP32 microcontroller. Here we have one of the development boards of the ESP32 microcontroller. Here it is blinking its GPIO5 pin and this relay and this solenoid valve every two seconds. And now we want to start programming these microcontrollers with our ordinary computers. We search for ESP32 Arduino IDE and we click this GitHub link that the manufacturer Espressive has made for us. 
scroll down to find this using Arduino IDE instructions for the operating system that you have at your computer. My computer here has Windows and I am advised to click this link. If you have the latest Arduino IDE version, you may skip this step number one. But I see here that a newer version of this tool has been published during these days that I was making this video. So I conveniently got an opportunity to show you how to update an Arduino IDE to a newer one. The process is practically the same no matter if you are updating this program or if you are installing it for the very first time. We just click this same link, download and run the installer program. It will ask for my permission first to get rid of the old Arduino IDE that I have here. That can be safely done because I have always saved my own programs into their default folder. And this newest version of the Arduino IDE is then installed by using everywhere the default settings. And as you see here, the version number is now changed to the newest one. Step number two is to install a tool that is called Python. It is important to use the version that begins with the numbers 2.7. Don't try those some versions that begin with the number 3, because they won't work here. I can see from this computer settings window that my computer's microprocessor can handle 64-bit computing, and I seem to be lucky not to have any Itanium processor here. So I choose this Windows installer. And while installing, most of us need to click here to enable this last Add Python EXE to Path option. Step number three is to install another tool that is called Git. That is a program that makes it easy for us to install ESP32 board definitions to our Arduino IDE. This web page seems to notice that I am not using any tablet computer and that my this laptop computer handles 64-bit computing. So I just run the installation program that is recommended for me and I choose all the default settings here as well. We start the step number four by clicking this magnifying glass icon at our computer's desktop. We search for a newly installed git bash program, right click it, pay attention to choose to run it as an administrator. Copy these two lines of text into the clipboard, paste those lines to the git bash window, execute them by pressing the enter key and finally we close the git bash program. In some YouTube videos they had to enter these lines one by one, but for my two different Windows computers it was possible to copy and paste them as a one whole thing. Step number five is to open the git bash program again, but this time we open it as a normal user without any right click. We copy these five lines of text into the clipboard, paste those lines into the git bash window, execute those five lines by pressing the enter key, and from this moment on we may now completely forget the git tool. Step number six is to take your ESP32 board and connect it to your computer with a USB cable. This particular FTDI chip should be supported by Windows 10. In other words, as my computer is connected to the internet, Windows 10 should automatically launch this program, connect to the Windows Update website, search for a proper driver and then install it to my computer.
it is known to take a while, and I had plenty of time to check here the status of that process by clicking on the magnifying glass icon, by searching and choosing the device manager, and then by choosing this row of ports. Perhaps the driver would have been found by itself after a while, but I was here impatient, and I right-clicked the USB port that had the yellow exclamation mark and chose to update driver software. And by that way I did start the search process manually. And finally we see that our computer has now found the FTDI chip at one of its USB ports. Steps number 7, 8 and 9 are familiar to most of us. We are allowed now to start the Arduino IDE. We choose tools, boards and choose among the new ESP32 boards the one that seems to suit best for our particular board. We select the newly found COM board that our ESP32 board is attached to. Then we choose for instance file, examples, basics, blink and tell to that fundamental example program the number of the digital pin that is at this particular port controlling the onboard LED. From the home page of this board I learned that here the LED is at the pin number 5. And as the final step number 10, we click the green arrow to compile and to upload our new program. Pay attention to that here we may need to hold the boot button during the whole uploading process. And after that we may have to shortly press the reset button to make our new program start running. And we see that the LED blinks now quicker than earlier, and we are now convinced that there is our very own program running at this ESP32 microcontroller. And it is good practice to save to the computer those programs that happen to work. I made this video at December 2016, and after a few months the installation process that we saw today should become even easier. But don't wait that long. Start doing your own experiments and your own projects and please share your experiences with us. And do get acquainted with the Bluetooth functionality that these microcontrollers have. I add into the description of this video some links where the Bluetooth functionality is handled and given to our disposal. Goodbye.